Hello, loves, and welcome back to the nightmare that is Bloodborne. Welcome back to the walls of Bergenworth. We are now going to trespass upon that forbidden ground. We're going to see what the uh, the church doesn't want us to see. Uncover the secrets behind their blood ministration, etc., etc. Can you see him? Just hidden there behind the tree, can you see him? That entity there is one of the students of Bergenworth. One of the products of their vile experiments. And as you can see, it has brought about a transformation of a sort, just not, maybe not the transcendence they were expecting. These creatures are called Gardens of Eyes. Which is, it implies that these entities were created specifically by the occult experiments of Bergenworth for cultivating eyes. Bergenworth, is a, it, they follow an entirely other metaphysics from the Healing Church. The Healing Church uses blood ministration, which, results, which obviously results in abomination and atrocity. The Bergenworth uses a different method, hence their their credo of fear the old blood. They don't use the blood. And here we are, here we are on the outskirts of Bergenworth itself. What they use is eyes. They magically and surgically transplant eyes onto and into themselves, which allows them, uh, in a very literal sense, as well as metaphorical, a degree of insight. It's like a... It's a form of resonant or sympathetic magic, in a way. The eyes are symbolic of insight itself. And it also results in transformations like that. Like the Healing Church, they have found a certain means of transcendence. They do commune with the Great Ones. It's just in the classic Lovecraftian vein. It's not what they thought it was going to be. It's, um... It's this. It results in as much monstrosity as it does transcendence, as we will see. It's interesting to note that the, di the divergences in terms of the metaphysics between the different schools and colleges and churches and temples in and around Yharnam, they all bring about their own peculiar form of atrocity and abomination, but also their own peculiar form of transcendence. It's very peculiar. I think if I were following any, it would probably be this one. It would probably be Bergenworth's, because it does work. It does work. They, as we will learn later on, they do come into contact with the Great Ones. They do discover the metaphysical ocean where the Great Ones swim. It's just, it has... It's brought about a situation where nightmares and transcendence, where madness and insight are the same thing. There's no distinction between those concepts. And these are basically, the implication of these guys is that they are what remains of the scholars and students of Bergenworth. This is what's left of them. Not nice, eh? That I love the legs. The sort of, oh no, oh no, oh, if he got me there, that would have been bad. The sort of, oh no, oh no, oh no! Listen, that keening wail. Ah, and he's friends in me. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, that's what they do. They're not very strong physically, but they have really powerful psionic abilities, and if they get a hold of you, they induce. What could be considered madness? What could be considered insight? It depends on where you're standing at the time, you know? It's their gift to you. Is a um, vision, I suppose, of a, of a kind and of a degree. It's interesting that the healing blood that the church uses, that brings about the more bestial, lycanthropic transformations. Whereas the... The things, the, the, the practices of Bergenworth, which are also found in a perverted form in Mensis and in Hemwick Charnel Lane and in Yargul, they bring about something very, very, very different. Still atrocious, still abominable, but of a much more sort of occult vein. And even the, the style of atrocity is different. The Bergenworth clearly brings about a kind of insectile transformation 
Um, and uh, there's also mollusks involved as well. It's ah, ugh, very unpleasant, but very cool. These are some of my favourite monsters in the game, actually. I think they are beautiful in their own peculiar ways. And to think this is what's been happening in Bergenworth ever since. Um, these creatures from other planes of existence that have been called through or that have been cultivated. Uh, we will see, actually, very soon, when we get to the front, the back gates of Bergenworth, there's a creature there that is extra-dimensional, and it's probably one of the most Lovecraftian entities in the entire game. You'll see it in a moment. If we get past these scholars here, you will see it. I love Bergenworth. I love the style of it. It's very much inspired by sort of exaggerations of a Victorian college or university, isn't it? Now, I only want one of them to come, if I can help it. I want to antagonise one of them. The real bitch here is when you antagonise them both at once and they come rampaging at you. That's very hard to handle. It's also no mistake that Bergenworth is founded on this lake here. Bodies of water reflecting the moon have great occult and metaphysical resonance in this game. And we just broke a lovely bench. You can just imagine, can't you, in its heyday, the scholars would have sat out here and... There it is! That creature is so weird! Wait till we get up close to it. It's like a sort of centipede form with a mouth in its front and its head is a flower. A glowing flower. This is some extra-dimensional being that clearly has been either cultivated or summoned by the scholars of Bergenworth. It's from the same planes that the Great Ones come from. Ew, and it vomits on you. Listen. And watch, it doesn't die, it just fades into another reality. So, I love that monster so much. You only encounter it here. In the main game, you only find it here, at the gates of Bergenworth. You do find different versions of it within the Chalice Dungeons that are much tougher. But in the main game, that's the only place you find it. That's the one encounter with it. And it, it's actually much easier to handle than it looks. It looks like a boss. The scale of the thing makes it look like a boss. It's not. It's just a normal enemy. And it's actually really, really easy to take down. You just stay on its flank, stay away from that mouth, and just wail on it. Just wail on it as you're skirting around it. And there's Bergenworth. We are now within the college itself, and there are some of the scholars left here. There's a white church hunter just up those stairs, and she is very tough indeed. But before we go and meet her, let's pillage a bit, shall we? I've got a pearl slug, uh, a ritual item, which is what you'd expect to find around here, of course. No scholars left anymore, of course. They do not um, conduct any kind of lectures or seminars here anymore, unfortunately. That's all ended. That ended when um, Lawrence and Ludwig left to found the Healing Church. Oh, she's she's tough. She's got a, she's of Bergenworth, so she has a lot of arcane abilities. She has the Organ of Ebrietas, the Pearl Slug, uh, both of which are hideous items. She was about to use the Organ of Ebrietas then. That's the Pearl Slug. That, if it catches you, can kill you in one hit very tough. Oh, she's also got that as well, the Rosemarinus, which is a... Uh, whoo, there's the Organ of Ebrietas! I wonder how uh, she would feel if she found out that uh, we may in fact be killing Ebrietas before very long. One of the great ones that these guys worship. Or at least seek to commune with. She's gonna kill me, isn't she? <laughs> this is not going well. <laughs> Having a, an epic fight on the stairs here, that's fun. She's a tough hunter, this one. She's also got an ability, she has an item that allows you, it, it stops you from healing, essentially. When she uses it on you, you can't heal for a, a brief period, which is, yes! There we go. And she will stay dead, she won't come back, which is nice to know. Blue Elixir, yeah. 
informed by my colleague Rowan that that it's a stealth item. There's a dead, if you look, there's an infant great one in that cage. It's um, a stealth item. It allows you to move unseen for a brief period, which is actually really useful in certain areas of the game. Um, Look at this. You can really imagine how there would have been scholars sat around here discussing at length the metaphysics of this of this universe. There's a summoning point there. Won't be using that because we're not doing that in this playthrough, my loves. We are not using help. We are fighting on our own. When the red moon hangs low, the line between man and beast is blurred. And when the great ones descend, a womb will be blessed with child. That's a prophecy. All of that is true. All of that is true. We're about to bring... We are going to bring it about. We're the sort of cipher of that prophecy, if you like. Look at that. Uh, the chandelier is some sort of astrolabe. It's like a thing that measures heavenly bodies. Planets and stars and whatnot. That's very cool. I like that. Luminarium key. We need that to open the way forward. Now, if we ascend into the heights... There's this peculiar contraption. Which is nothing... It, I, I, I imagine this was meant to be something more. Like a puzzle you were meant to solve, but uh, it just wasn't programmed in. I imagine they just didn't have time. That happens quite a lot with the FromSoft games. If you play the original Dark Souls, you get to the area Ezolith, and it's pretty clearly unfinished. They ran out of time to finish it. Still interesting. It's still a... Oh, the empty phantasm shell. That's a fun bit of work. It, If you use the empty phantasm shell, it puts... Yeah, you come with me. Why not? It puts arcane damage onto your weapon. Not that I need it with this weapon, because this is the Holy Moonlight Blade. And it already has arcane damage, so it won't work with this. But more mundane weapons it will work with. I've got a lot of blood echoes. I, I'm thinking I should go and use those. Or should I? I opened the door with a luminarium key. Ah ha ha. We know this chappy, don't we? Remember when we touched the skull after killing Vicar Amelia? This is the chap we saw in the vision. This is um, Wellen. This is Master Wellen. And if you look at him, he's got like fungal growths growing out of his back. He... Ooh. What's he pointing at? Hmm. Intriguing. He can't commune with us anymore. He can't talk. He's too far gone from the experiments that have been conducted here. He's not really of this world anymore, to be honest. He's something else. But he's guiding us. He knows what has to happen in order for himself to be released. And look, his blood is that of the kin. He's almost completed a transformation into some other condition. Now, in the normal game, I've already got the item, which is why it gave me Madman's Knowledge, but in the normal game when you kill him, it gives you um, a rune that has a, a symbol from Lovecraft's work on it. A, a very definite Lovecraftian work, um, which is kind of cool. It's a, a nice definitive link between this game and Lovecraft's mythology. Um, but yeah, you could spend hours unpicking the influences in this game. I mean, you need someone like um, one of those internet channels that does that. Someone like Nightmind or like uh, Vatividya. Vatividya has done that. Vatividya has spent hours unpicking the lore and symbolism in this game. It's unbelievable. And has done videos about every character, every area, every boss. It's it's really fun. It's a real rabbit hole to go down because Vati Vidya puts a lot of effort into exploring the symbolism and potential interpretations of this game. It's great fun, gotta say. Right, time to upgrade, I do believe. I've got a lot of blood echoes. What is it you desire? Uh, yeah. Is that enough? Yeah, that's great. Wonderful. We're doing rather well, actually, all things considered. I had visions of getting to the Watchers of Yarnum and just calling it quits, to be honest. Because I've never fought, I've never finished those guys on my own before, so it was real fun. It was a real, um, it felt like a real challenge, you know, to do that. It felt good to do that. <laughs> Righty-ho. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? We're going back to the Tomb of Erden. We're going to go and talk to some people before 
we fight the boss. I just want to see if... No. I, I, had, I had visions of Henrik turning up here. Um, of maybe catching it, but no, it's not going to happen, unfortunately. We've missed that particular uh, story arc in this playthrough. Worry not, if you want to see it, just go back to my previous two playthroughs and we, we, we fight Henrik here. But that means that Eileen the Crow is going to have a very different uh, story arc in this version of the game we play. So that's fun. That's one of the fun things about Bloodborne. When you do different things, the game turns out differently. Like, different story arcs activate. Characters react differently. It's kind of fun. Hello, you! Not in the old town. Not in the old town. Yeah, I think it is, mate. I think it is. So sorry to say, but I think it is. Hello. Oh yeah, they're all losing it. There you are. Your Emily, dear. Yeah, she's completely lost her her uh, marbles now. Whatever you say. And you? Ah, brave hunter. What is it? Have you renewed thoughts on this matter? I've renewed thoughts on your ponytail. What the hell me, hair product I are you using to keep it that straight oh, and rigid? Do with lowly blood like mine. Exactly. And also, um, besides which, she's from the church. So she has used a lot of the tainted blood, and when I say a lot, I mean a lot. In fact, if we head up this way, I wonder if the crow is already here. Eileen might already be here, actually. I'm just going to go and double check. There's, um, because of the story arc we set her on, she will appear next in the chapel of the Grand Cathedral where we fought Vicar Amelia. She might be here already. I'll just double check. Oh god, these guys are here. Ugh! No! Leave me alone! No! Oh god, thank god for that. Ugh, oh, those guys with the... The sticks that cause um, madness, that cause frenzy. No, she's not here yet. Maybe when we activate the next cycle of the moon she'll turn up. And unfortunately, this time round, she will not be our ally. As she was in the previous two playthroughs. It's kind of a shame. But in this version, we're going to sadly drive her mad. Yay! <laughs> okay. Um, I suppose we've got to go, we've got to go kill... Um, yeah, we've got to go back to Bergenworth. We got us a boss to fight, a big one. A, a, in fact, a really big one. This boss is a turning point in the entire game. Rom the Vacuous Spider. Do you remember the note we found before the Cathedral War that said the spider of Bergenworth hides all secrets or something like that? What your, I, What I infer from that, anyway, what you're supposed to take from that is that there's an entity here in Bergenworth that's sealing away certain things within Yarnum that's holding certain secrets in place. It's like it's like Rom is holding the ritual in place, like she's suspending it somehow and preventing the nightmare from moving on to its next phase. Oh, there they go, over the edge. <laughs> it's kind of cool. So, of course, to move things on, we've got to go destroy her. All right! No, that was not an impromptu suicide. Here we are on the Moonside Lake, and there is Rom the Vacuous Spider in her own strange sub-realm. What I, what I think what you're supposed to take from Rom is that she was a scholar of Bergenworth but actually succeeded. She has become a great one, and a damn powerful one at that. She now exists like all the great ones do in this metaphysical body of water. 
in her own realm where she is effectively a kind of goddess. But interestingly, although she has incredible arcane power, not that strong in and of herself. She's actually quite easy. What makes her hard are these bloody spiders that she summons. These things are pains. They will mob you. That attack, that jumping attack, can kill you in one hit. If it hits, if it connects, it will kill you in one go. They're very tough. And in order to tackle Rom, you need to kill them all. If you don't and start attacking her, they'll just mob up on you and kill you from behind. And when they're all gone, when we start attacking her, she'll summon some more. So this fight is an exercise in patience, really. It's an endurance fight. Um, if you try to, to brute force it and mob her, th th it will fail. You've just got to take it slow, take it easy, lead the spiders away from one another, kill them one at a time. And have, have patience. I mean, if you do that, you can actually do this fight without taking a hit. It's just, it takes a long time. Like, a long time and a lot of patience. It's a long fight, this one. A lot of people uh, find this one really difficult. Um, uh, if you watch a lot of the playthroughs uh, on YouTube, a lot of people find this boss difficult. Um, I've never found it difficult, just... It's, it's long. It, take, it requires patience, this one. Ow, 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 ow. Love the music. The music suggests something celestial and divine rather than something horrific. And that fits Rom to a T. She is some an entity that has succeeded. Look, she has the eyes grafted onto her. Loads of eyes. And everything about her is a cult. She does have physical attacks, but they're largely... They're not that strong. It, she's going to start using her occult powers now. This is where this is where she gets tough. She's casting magical bolts at me. So now you've got to deal with the spiders whilst evading her occult and arcane attacks, which is difficult. This is where she gets tough. But with patience, it's very very doable. It's very possible. Really, before doing this fight, you should really put on some armor that has high arcane defense. That helps a great deal. Um, for me, my hunter has very, very low arcane defense. For lots of reasons. Lo not least of which is the amount of insight I've got. High insight equals low arcane defense. It makes you very vulnerable to arcane attacks. Whoa. Look at how much damage that spider took off in one hit. They are so tough. That's why you take them down one at a time and while they're isolated. Because if you don't, they will murder you. Oh, here she goes again. I love the fact the music shifts in the, this phase of the fight. Oh, we got it from behind. That's not good. It becomes much more threatening when she starts doing her arcane attacks. Oh, here we go again. If you don't know how to do it, that's remarkably difficult to evade as well. You just learn. It's like everything in Bloodborne. You learn over time how to do it. Not the only attack she can do either. She can do quite a few different arcane attacks. She'll start doing them when we get closer to her. She can emit this arcane field that's very difficult to, to get through. And she can also summon um, arc those things like arcane bolts from under the ocean. They rise up underneath you, which is quite tricky. Uh. Like most of the fights, it's really well balanced, this one. If you know what you're doing, it's not that bad. It actually has technique, you know? It's not like, say, Ludwig, who we'll be fighting later. Um, or Dark Beast Pal, or anyone like that. Um, where there's a bit of more luck involved, really. She has very, very particular patterns. And as long as you get to know those patterns and work within them, 
you'll be fine. But I love what she represents. I really love what she represents. She's holding it back. The ritual of Mensis that's... Some sort of ritual that's... There's the one from Under the Ocean. Um, that's trying to pervert the dream. That's trying to create a synthetic Great Ones, I suppose. She's holding it back. She's making sure it never reaches fruition. Okay. I thought, I don't know what she did there. Oh, oh, oh. I love how animated she is. You can, her, all of her attacks are really well telegraphed. No, don't attack the head. The head is invulnerable. You have to attack the flanks. This weapon's great against her. The Holy Moonlight Blade is amazing against her. Normally, in the main game, you wouldn't have the Holy Moonlight Blade at this point. So I'd advise uh, the Tonitrus. The Tonitrus, with its electrical power, is fantastic against her. She's going to get a bit more aggressive now. Which uh, doesn't make things easy. But she's actually dying quite quickly. We've, we've whittled down quite a lot of her health. That may be just due to the, uh, the degree to which I've upgraded the Holy Moonlight Blade, which is a lot. Look at these guys as well. Do not attack them face on. They've got like stone faces or like stone masks on their faces. Um, which m makes them pretty much invulnerable from the front or from head on. You need to attack them from behind or on the flanks. See? Ah! That scything attack. I love it. Absolutely love it. Very different from the spiders in the, in the rest of the game. Completely different models. I mean, it would have been easy just to use the, um, the same spiders that occur in the main game and in the Chalice Dungeons. But no, these are Rom's own creatures. Own children, I suppose. I mean, with, with a great one like Rom, it's, it's hard to say for sure what any of this is. I mean, they could all be Rom, you know? They could all be projections of her, or alternative versions of her, or whatever. It's hard to say. The Vacuous Spider, I mean, that's, that's interesting, isn't it? Vacuous, as in what? As in empty? As something that... to which all things tend towards? Like a black hole? A vacuum of things. It makes sense in its oblique way when you understand that she is trying to halt the ritual of Mensis and really halt the progression of the dream. The dream itself becomes kind of vacuous with her holding it in place, yeah? The moon can't move on to its next phase. And Yargul's experiments, there's her arcane blast attack can't continue whilst she's alive. She's holding it all in place, holding it all back. And this is all stuff you've got to infer. It's not written anywhere, except in the most oblique fashion. But it's very heavily implied. Very heavily implied. I mean, the lore to this game is just fantastic. I wouldn't ever want it more explicitly... Um, more explicitly recorded or notified than it is. Because that's part of its charm. That's what makes the storytelling in this game so unique. I mean, it's even more... I, I would say it's even more subtle and symbolic than Dark Souls. Much as I love the lore for that game, there's a lot more of it in Dark Souls that is much more absolute, you know? Look at him scuttling away there. I love the, the animation, the motion of the spiders is amazing. I mean, what, what's fascinating is the spiders look like spiders, but Rom herself does not. She looks more like a, like a, 
a woodlouse or a flea or a pill bug or something like that, yeah? I suppose Rom the vacuous pill bug didn't have the same ring to it. Or Rom the vacuous woodlouse. No, you've got that double that double assonance there. Or, or double sibilance. No, that doesn't work. Wood the vacuous woodlouse? No. That's not nice. But Rom the Vacuous Spider is lovely. It's a fantastic name. Ah, that's one of her physical attacks. She just basically uses her body to crush you. But that's all she can do. She herself, Rom herself, is actually kind of helpless outside of her arcane ability. Speaking of, that can kill you in one blast. You need to be really careful of that. There she goes. That's Rom done, my loves. Wow. We've got some Kin Cold Blood out of that too. Fabulous. That is brilliant. Okay, now there should be... Aha, there we are. You see her in the distance? Just on the edge of the horizon there. Someone has come visiting. Now this is not a literal person. This is a, a projection, a ghost, or an echo, if you like. This is Lady Yarnum. The Thumerian Queen, after whom Yarnum is named. And those are the cries of Murgo, her child. She conceived a child with Erden, the great moon presence. Um, and that child was taken from her by the ritual of Mensis. And now they're separated. Murgo is locked in a, uh, a corporeal state in the Nightmare of Mensis. And that's what we need to destroy. The Nightmare itself that's holding Murgo in place. And that will help us. That will help us to end our own Nightmare. And also to end the suffering of both Murgo and Yarnum. Ahaha, look! Ritual secret broken. Seek the nightmare newborn. In other words, Murgo. And there is the amygdala. If you couldn't see it before, then when you uh, emerge in this phase of the moon, you can see it now. Regardless of what um, uh, insight you've got. It is now worth going all around Yarnum, by the way because things have changed. Uh, we're in the new phase of the moon. As you can see, the light is different. The light is very different. Um, Uh-oh. Oh, fuck. This is, ah! A lot of the monsters will either be gone or will be different. Oh, shit. I'm not doing very well here. I can tell you. What? Oh, dear me. This executioner is kicking my ass. Well, yeah. He really did. God. Doing fabulously here. <laughs> I suppose I'm owed a few. I've done reasonably well thus far. I haven't had that many deaths, so I'm owed a few, I suppose. But yeah, there'll be now characters have changed, monsters will have changed, new story arcs will have uh, will have emerged, so it's well worth having a look around now. Now, where are my blood echoes? I would like them back. Oh, there they are. That's fine. Also, Yana itself is different because the, the lighting is going to be different. The red moon has now risen and the ritual of Mensis is underway. Right. Let's lure him down here away from those guys with their rifles, shall we? Actually, now that I think about it, the executioners, we need to go to Kanehurst, don't we? We need to do the Kanehurst subplot, which is a lot of fun, gotta say. Also, one of the harder bosses up there, Marta Logarius, um, who always gives me trouble for some reason. He always gives me a difficulty. He is one of those problematic bosses where there's a, 
it's very difficult to get into a rhythm with him. Everything is crazy now. All the people who were indoors, they're all... No response. I wonder why. Look at the clouds. Look at the sky. There's the red moon. The moon of Murgo. The blood moon. Yeah, everything's wrong now. Everything is screwed up. Three ways from Sunday. If it wasn't before, it is now. Fortunately, a lot of the enemies have gone. Now Eileen is going to be up here. Eileen is going to be up here. And this is going to be tough. She's a hard fight, my loves. Oh, do I really want that? No, I want the, I want the Holy Moonlight Sword to be dealing with her. Okay, here we go. Okay, Eileen, let's dance! Now, the Augur of Ebrietas actually gives me a really unfair advantage here. The Augur is so good against hunters, it's unbelievable. If you come here having defeated Henrik and made Eileen your friend, then there's another encounter here with a, a different type of hunter. He's actually a hunter of Canehurst, a vile blood, and he actually ends up killing Eileen and waking her up from the dream and he is one of the hardest hunter fights in the whole game including Gascoigne, including German, including Lady Maria of the Astral Clock Tower he is a nightmare all of those others I found a way of defeating without resorting to trickery you know in a fair fight this guy, the, 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 the Crow of Canehurst, I haven't. He is a nightmare. Eileen's pretty tricky. She's not that bad, but Eileen's pretty tricky. She can kill you very quickly if you're not careful. Yeah, you need to be on your guard with her all the time. Otherwise, she will kill you. And look how quickly she ducks and dives under your attacks. Yeah, she's lost. She's actually lost her mind. So sad. I love Eileen. She's great. But that's her business. She is the hunter of hunters. You know, her business is to take out those hunters who go mad with blood. There she is. There she is. That's her ending. That's her, I suppose, her bad ending if you like. That's her more negative ending. Um, it's a shame I like Eileen. Eileen's one of my favourite characters in this game. Um, she's one of the few who, if you do it right, is friendly all the way to the end. Um, doesn't come to a good ending, of course, because nobody does in this game, but at least she stays relatively sane, which is more than can be said for most. And I suppose, I mean, I suppose you could look at it another way. We haven't killed her per se. We've, we've made her wake up. I mean, she will have to go through the cycles again, unfortunately, because of the nature of how she died. Um, she went mad, so she will now recycle through her, whatever her dream is. She'll go back to the beginning of it um, and forget, which is what happens to the hunters. That's the way the metaphysics of the hunter's dream works. And there's Amygdala presiding over all. Yes, if you didn't have the insight before, in this phase of the moon, Amygdala is revealed anyway. So that will just turn up, whether you've got the insight or not. And all these guys, boy are they losing it now. Oh dear. Okay, you do you. I have my share of woes. You poor thing. But don't you worry. <laughs> this will help you forget. Forget your troubles. Forget your cares. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah, she becomes a dispensary for sedatives. Um, which is kind of cool. They will be most... Oh, dear. Oh, there you are. Oh, she's not looking good. Forgive me. I'm a bit out of sorts. Mm-hmm. So, no blood today, I'm afraid. That's what you think. Yeah, it's all over now. Hello! To be heard. Oh, we've already Town. heard this spiel. Blah, 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 blah. We've heard this spiel. Okay, where are we going to go next? What should we do next? I suppose we should do a bit of Yargul, yeah? Let's do a bit of Yargul. Um, this is, if you didn't get kidnapped by the Snatchers earlier in the game, this is how you come to Yargul legitimately. <laughs> the Unseen Village. Now, these are products of the rituals, basically the coven of bell-ringing women that summon enemies from the dead they are here they are presiding over the ritual of Yargul and they worship it seems they either worship or are calling down the amygdala because as you can see they're everywhere or it is everywhere I mean it's hard to tell is it is it one creature existing in multiple states and places at once or is it many entities Whatever the case, it or they are definitely attracted by the rituals of Mensis and seem to be inspiring them in some way. It's very cool. I like the notion that the Amygdala are either, I don't know, a species of Great One that, are, that take a very particular interest in the affairs of humanity. And if, as you can see, there's a, a scholar of Yarnum there, uh, of Mensis there, sat in his chair with his cage over his head. Unfortunately, because the bell-ringing women are everywhere here, the enemies, um, the enemies resurrect constantly until you kill the bell-ringing women. Look at the state of those statues. That is, oof, that's that's disturbing stuff, isn't it? Oh, there's an amygdala again. Yay! I mean, you can kill them and put them down temporarily to clear your way, but they'll always come back. They will always come back, so you've got to locate the bell-ringing women and slay them. Also, the amygdala don't help. They will grab you, they'll inflict frenzy, and some of them... There's a bell-ringing woman. Some of them will also fire laser beams at you. So you've got to be... You've got to be careful. Okay? That's... That has weakened them considerably, and they will now die permanently because the bell ringing women that serves them is dead. So we can deal with these guys now. That's the trick here in Yargul. You've got to locate the bell ringing women and take them out. Because if you don't, you just get swamped. There's so many enemies here, and they just keep coming back. You know, they just keep coming back. So it's a case of. Uh, Seeking out the women and killing them. Yay, I suppose. Ah, the Mensis ritual must be stopped lest we all become beasts. Yeah, right? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. It must be stopped. Time for communion, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what, whatever it is Mensis and its allies are doing, it is corrupting reality around itself. It's, it's like the statues are I indicative of it, the way they're actually formed of melded together bodies and whatnot. It's, uh, there's even these guys, these are Witches of Hemwick. So there's like an alliance of occult forces here in Mensis. Oh, hello! There's, there's a very... Uh, we're getting very intimate with Amygdala there. I'm sure Patches will be jealous when we uh, finally meet him. He's always talking about... When we do meet him, he'll be talking about... Oh, God, this is a pain. He will talk about um, Amygdala quite a lot. He likes his god Amygdala. So he does. That's beautiful, isn't it? That's just amazing. Love that creature. 
there aren't many more Lovecraftian entities in Bloodborne than that. Maybe one more, maybe one I can think of, and that is Ebrietas. Ebrietas is very Lovecraftian indeed. Oh god, here they are. See, women of Hemwick, witches. It's like all the occult forces are concentrated here in Yargul. Now, they will come back because we haven't killed the bell ringing woman that summons them. Now, where is she? There she is. That's one of them, anyway. There we go. Now we can take out these guys and open up some shortcuts. Oh, missed that. Whiffed completely. Wonderful. Good place to level up this one. Everything's worth a lot of blood echoes. And of course they keep coming back if you don't kill the bell ringing woman, so you can just keep doing it. A lot of people uh, use this area in the later game to level up. Oh! <laughs> I love that sort of bloody flayed look they have. I think that's really cool. Yeah, Yargul is definitely my kind of town, I've got to say. I will give Mensis this. At least they're trying to do something. At least they have vision, you know? They're trying to end... The, they're trying to bring about their own transcendence, you know? They're not just sitting on their hands like the scholars of Bergenworth are. Well, I say hands, and, you know, in this game it could be anything, couldn't it? You know, <clears throat> grasping pseudopods, or claws, or tendrils, or whatever the hell. Alrighty. As you can see, there are lots of people who uh, clearly died, but are praying or whatever. And as you can also see, in the distance, the Amygdala are everywhere. And they always have been. We just haven't been able to see them. We haven't had the insight. It's been sealed away from us. But they've been here since the beginning. I love the implication of the Amygdala, that they're just interested... Maybe they're feeding somehow off of the, the fear and the madness. Or maybe they're inspiring it. It's hard to tell. There's nothing definitive in that regard. More witches up here? A lot of witches, actually. And a very, very well-hidden bell-ringing woman. She's You have to come off here onto this little uh, parapet and go through here. And she is just off to the side here. Very hard to find. If you haven't played the game before, very hard to find. Hello! Oh, he's got... What has he got? Like a big bit of statue. That would hurt if he hit us with that. That's for damn sure. But it is well worth doing this, because you can come down here. And here is a, is a hunter who has the Upper Cathedral Key. If you don't do that... And you don't get that key, which is very hard to find if you don't know where it is. A whole section of the game, and indeed a key part of the story, is denied you. Like, a big part of the story is completely denied you. So, and when I first played the game, I didn't find it. I, I, I didn't know it was there. It was actually playing, it was actually watching... Um, it may have been the Game Grumps, actually. It may have been the Game Grumps uh, playthrough of Bloodborne when I discovered that. I remember I, I was watching it and they came, they went to the Upper Cathedral Ward and I was like, hang on! I, I never went through that area. So I had to play the game through again so I could see that area, of course. Well, obviously. I mean, there are not many games these days where I'm a completionist, where I want to see and do everything. Uh, I just don't have the time for it. But Bloodborne and is one. Bloodborne... Oh, hello, hello, Amygdala. You see him raise up there as though he's watching you. That's very cool. I like that. Yeah. Whoa! Goodness gracious me. Okay, there's a lot of them through here. A lot of them. 
Um, I think what you're supposed to do, the amygdala over there, if you get underneath him or get close to him, he starts firing lasers. The ones uh, that the, the boss version of him used. So if you lead the women into the path of those lasers, it absolutely desolates them. Just a pet peeve of mine, a linguistic, like, pet peeve. The way people popularly use decimate when they mean desolate. Decimate means reduced by ten, specifically. Um, it's a very specific term, when actually what they mean is desolate. It happens all the time. I mean, like, you know, there are lots of very well-established, very well-written TV dramas that do it all the time. All the time. Anywho, here we go. Yup, there's the laser. There's the laser. That. Look at look at how much health it took off. If you get caught in that, it can kill you so quickly. It's unbelievable. But yeah, let Amygdala do the work for you. I mean, why not? Lead the women down here and let him blast the tits off them. Look at him up there, sort of suspended. I love that. Absolutely incredible. Do you see where we are? If you look down there. That's the chapel where we first came to uh, Yargul when the Snatchers kidnapped us. No Snatchers down there now, but Hunters. Three of them, in fact. And the way they're positioned and the way they activate, the game kind of wants you to fight them all at once. But we're not going to do that. Ugh, can you hear the noise the Amygdala makes is gross. Oh, I forgot about him. Shit. Hello. This is gonna... This is gonna be tricky. This is gonna be tricky. These three at once. Okay. Uh-oh. Right, we need to kill the bell-ringing woman before we do anything. She's in this corner over here, very well hidden. There she goes, and that will shockwave all of these momentarily and weaken them and let us do this business. Everything's so sort of wet and bloodstained, isn't it? It's gross. I love it. Absolutely love it. It's... I mean, I've said it a million times before, but I love the way everything is set up like a puzzle. Every situation, every encounter is set up like a puzzle. So as long as you approach it like a puzzle and not as a fight, per se, then you're in the right mindset. Okay, here we are. This is the chapel, remember, where the, and there's the statue of Amygdala. And there's the lantern, but it's been smashed. Nightmare rituals crave a newborn. Find one and silence its harrowing cry. I intend to. Now, these three hunters, they're very tricky. They're very tricky. This one has got the beast claw and has actually got the beast transformation, which allows for a different move set. Now, if we stay here, all three of them will come after us at once, and we need to fight all three of them. Not going to do that. I'm going to run round here, now that I visceraled him, so that he deactivates. And then I'm going to come in through the main entrance, and then I'm going to visceral the other one in the back. And we're going to keep doing that until they die. Ew. These things are great. These are the products, the byproducts of the Ritual of Mensis these fused together corpses in boxes that have become animated. They are gross. Okay, so here, there's the hunter we just visceraled. The other one, who would have activated if we'd have stayed in there, is just behind here. See him? There he is. And he's quite tough. If you fight him fairly. I say if. Because we're not gonna... Now we're going to run round, and we're going to visceral the other one in the back again. Look, I know. It's, it, it's, it's dirty as hell. This is fighting so dirty. But, hey, I, I'm using what advantages I have, alright? It just means I don't have to fight all these hunters at once. And the way it's set up, it almost wants you to do this, you know? <laughs> That's him dead, I think. 
Yep, that's that one gone. Oh, the other one didn't activate. That's unusual. Normally, the minute you kill one of them, the others activate. Or just attack the other one. But hey, I'm not complaining. That means I can just go behind this one and visceral him again. Oh, listen to him. Blah. Everything is gross in Yargul. It was gross before and it's gross now. Okay, right, where is he? Ooh, ooh, ooh. If you look, he's got the church cannon. That's a nasty weapon, that is. He's nearly dead, actually. We might be able to get a, a some... Yeah, we can kill him. There we go. He's dead. And these guys, being hunters, do not come back. When they're dead, they dead. One more. He's down there on the steps. And this one... This one has a very peculiar item, the Tiny Tonitrus, which allows him to do this. He can cast electrical bolts at you. So this guy is tough. But I'm going to, again, use very naughty advantages. I'm going to use the Organ of Ebrietas, which is going to do awesome damage to him. And also keep him on the back foot, so he can't ever really do anything. As I've said before, the Augur is so unfair against hunters. It basically makes a mockery of them. Except for very, like, the boss hunters. It makes an absolute mockery of them. I mean, look, most of the time they can't even get close to you. It's pretty incredible. No use using your tiny tonitrus down there, mate. Oh, I got caught on the banister. God damn it. Okay, come on. Got ya. <laughs> Mid-air. And now we've got him. And that's him done, my loves. That is him done. Right. I think that's enough hunting. Hunting of hunters for now. We've killed four of them in this video. Um, hang on. Let's just, let's just have a look around. There's some fun stuff. There's some fun stuff in Yargul. Let's just have a look around and see if we can... Uh, really, what I should do is go and... Um, I should go and spend my blood echoes, really. Because I've got a lot of them. Like, a hell of a lot. And if I lose them, I will be upset. When we come back, we will take a look at some of the horrors of Yargul. And believe me... In a game replete with horrors, this area is notable for them. So, let's activate this shortcut, which takes us back up to the beginning of this sector. Very useful. Very useful. We'll deal with these guys while we're at it. Blech. Guy in a wheelchair. Guy in a wheelchair with a big rifle. Be very careful of him. And I believe there's an item of armor over here. Yeah, the Iron Yargul Helm and a Shadow of Amygdala there. Right, I think, my loves, I am going to go spend these Echoes of the Blood. Uh, when we come back, we will delve deeper into the rituals of Yargul. Until then, my loves, bye-bye!